The ASAP and PSAP controller require at least version 7 of the RoboCylinder software in order to communicate. Version 7 of the software is also backwards compatible and will work on older models of the controller. As a reminder, SEP controllers cannot be networked together with CON controllers to be connected to the same PC. When setting up a SEP controller for the first time, the first thing you need to do is the initial setup menu. The first time the SEP controller is connected, this window will pop up automatically. If it does not, you can open it by going to Setting, Controller, Initial Setting for the SEP controller. The SEP initial setting screen is password protected. The II initial password is 5119. The first screen that will pop up is the IO pattern selection screen. Here you can pick between PIO patterns 0 through 5. The first PIO pattern, pattern 0, is referred to as standard pattern. Once you've selected the PIO pattern that you want to use, the next screen shows several different options available for that pattern. The first option is solenoid type. This gives you the choice between single solenoid mode or double solenoid mode. Again, single solenoid mode uses one input signal for two separate positions, where double solenoid mode uses two inputs for two positions. The second option is called control servo. This refers to enabling or disabling the servo on input. This is the same thing as parameter 21 in the current version of the RoboCylinder software. If no is selected, the servo on input will be disabled, meaning that when the controller is turned on, the servos will turn on automatically. If you select yes, the servo on input will have control over the servos. This also gives you the option of looking at the servo on output. At the bottom, output signal option, you can choose between what outputs you want to look at. Home complete and alarm, home complete and servo on, or servo on and alarm. Notice if no is selected, the output signal option is grayed out. If single solenoid valve type is selected, the stop signal option is available. The stop signal option refers to enabling or disabling the star STP input. This is the same thing as parameter 15 in the current RoboCylinder software. If stop signal is not used, that means the hold input is disabled. If stop signal is selected as used, that means the star STP signal needs to be on in order for the actuator to be enabled. If double solenoid mode is selected, input signal option needs to be selected as well. In this option, you select between level, also referred to as continuous operation, or edge, also referred to as momentary operation. The next option refers to homing. If manual is selected, the actuator will home once it receives a position input. If auto is selected, the actuator will home upon startup. Finally, the last option is output signal type. This is the difference between LS0 and PE0. Limit switch outputs will always be on when the actuator is within the position band of that taut position. Even if the actuator is just temporarily moving through that position, the limit switch output will turn on. This mimics an actual limit switch being wired in the field. Position end is like our standard RoboCylinder position complete output. When the actuator is within the position band of the top position, the PEE signal will turn on. This was only for that signal. Once you've selected the options for the SEP controller, press OK. The controller will need to be restarted in order for the changes to take effect. Once you've completed the initial setup screen, you can now start teaching the actuator like you normally would. We're going to open up the position data screen. you notice a few things have changed. Everything above the position table has remained the same. Servo on, jogging, moving to position, location value, all the same. In the position table, you'll notice the position names have changed to backward position, forward position, and center position for three position mode. All of the other columns are the same except for ecology, which now refers to our energy saving mode. This is the position screen for PIO Pattern 0, also referred to as Standard Mode. I now want to change to PIO Pattern 1. When going back to Setting, Controller, Initial Setting for the SEP Controller, enter the password 5119, and change to Speed Change PIO Pattern, otherwise referred to as PIO Pattern number 1. PIO Pattern number 1 has all the same option as PIO Pattern number 0. Remember, PIO Pattern number 1 only has an added signal for Speed Change Mode. I'm going to press OK, 
restart the controller, and then reopen up the position data screen so I can show you what position data looks like for the speed change mode. As you can notice, everything else is the same except for speed change position and speed change velocity has been added. Speed change mode allows you to set a certain position where the actuator will change velocity. When the SPDC input is turned on, the actuator will change speed at the given location. For example, in the forward position, the actuator will move to 50 millimeters at 250 millimeters per second. If the speed change input is turned on, at 25 millimeters, the actuator will decelerate down to 5 millimeters per second and then finish the move. If the speed change input remains off, the actuator will stay at 250 millimeters per second for the entire move. In order to test the speed change function, we need a way to be able to turn on the speed change input. This button is located right next to the step move button in the positioning test mode screen. By turning on the speed change button, it also turns on the speed change input, which tells the actuator to change speed at the given position to the given velocity. We're now going to look at PIO pattern number two. I'm going to close my position table, go to setting, controller, initial setup for the sub controller, enter the password of 5119, and select preparation change, PIO pattern number two. Now let's take a look at position data table for PIO pattern number two. As you can see, there are two different sets of positions. Backward and forward position set number one, and backward and forward position set number two. Depending on the state of the position change input, we will either run position set number one or position set number two. If input CN1, the position change input, is off, we will run position set number one. If CN1 is on, we will run position set number two. Now let's look at PIO pattern number three. I'm going to go to the initial setting screen just like I did for the previous three patterns. I'm going to select PIO pattern number three or two input three position mode. As you can see most of the options are the same except for the midway move option. This gives you the option of turning both input on or both inputs off for the midway or center position move. Now let's take a look at the position data screen for PIO pattern number three. For PIO pattern number three, everything is the same except for we now have a center position. We will command to go to the center position with either both ST0 and ST1 on, or both ST0 and ST1 off, depending on what you set in the initial setup screen. Now let's take a look at PIO pattern number four. The major difference between PIO pattern number three and PIO pattern number four is that pattern number three has two inputs for three positions and pattern number four has three inputs for three positions. As you can see, all the options in the initial setting screen are the same. The position data screen for PIO pattern number four looks identical to the position screen for PIO pattern number three. The only difference is how you command to go to the positions via the inputs. Let's take a look at PIO pattern number five. PIO pattern number five is referred to as the auto drive or reciprocating mode. All the options in the initial setting screen are the same as PIO pattern number zero. The position data screen for PIO pattern number five is identical to the one for PIO pattern number zero. The only difference is there's only one input, ASTR. When this input is on, the actuator will reciprocate between the backward and forward positions without stopping. When the input turns off, the actuator will stop. Let's take a look at some of the added features to version 7 of the RoboCylinder software. Under the status monitor window, you'll notice that there's an IO test button. By pressing this button, it gives me the option to force outputs. I can force any output that is available for that actuator's PIO pattern. Another added feature of the version 7 of the RoboCylinder software is the Help About menu. It now gives you more information about the core version of the controller that you are communicating to.